So, I think I know exactly what I gotta talk about here. And I cannot stress this enough, that you need to understand, especially in picture and video, your body fat level is going to play a substantial role in not only how you look in general, but also how big you look, right? There could be a guy 40 fucking pounds lighter than me, 50 pounds lighter than me, but if he's diced and we're posing together, like, sure, I may you know, be a little bit, like, larger in the frame, but his ass is going to look fucking cooler. Because right? he's got fucking cuts and striations and veins all over the place. And even somebody who's, like, legit smaller can kind of hold their own against someone who's bigger than them if they've got more body fat. And, you know, that's just a fact of life, right? Or a fact of, uh, you know, our fucking human perception of shit. But what a lot of people take that as is just okay i can never put on too much body fat because it's going to make me look smaller i i, I don't want to look smaller i don't want to lose my cuts I, I i just want to stay where i am you know if you're floating around like 10 percent ish body fat you know reasonably lean you got veins when you're pumped you can see your abs it's a very comfortable state of being but you gotta remember you know just being comfortable you're not gonna fucking get anywhere right you know, a ship is safe in the harbor, but that's not what it's really fucking meant for, you know? So people who are discouraged by bulking due to the fact that they're like, oh, well, I don't want to lose my abs. I don't want to lose my veins. You know, I don't want to look, like, subjectively worse than I do now. You're looking at the fucking, you know, you're looking at the picture way too close up, man. You got to back up and understand... If your weight is plateaued, and like, I'd say for the beginner lifter, for the most part, <sighs> unless you're like chronically skinny, I mean like fucking bones, or in that case, you really got to start packing on calories ASAP to just get some fucking mass on your body. But for the most part, for the beginner lifter, I'm not going to say jump on an insane bulk. It's just not necessary yet. I'd say main gaining is really probably the name of the game there, you know. Eat your protein, however many pounds you weigh, about two grams, or no, no, what am I talking, two grams, about a gram of protein to match that is about right. So if you're a 180 pound lifter, if you get about 180 grams of protein, I don't think there's any need to go higher than that, but that's about right. <sighs> And that's pretty conventionally agreed upon. People, I mean, some guys are going to say you don't need that much. Other kind of maybe more old school guys are going to say you should do upwards of like two grams per pound of body weight. I'll say this. If you do a gram per pound, you're probably in the green. You're probably good. Uh, you know, so eat your protein. You know, maybe try to get a few extra cups of rice or a few extra helpings at you know, your family's dinner every night. And just lift hard. You can make some solid gains. But if you're plateaued, if you've been lifting hard and you do want to get bigger, but the scale isn't changing and you're just staying the same fucking weight, you got to make a serious move, you know, because you, you're not progressing. You're just maintaining. So if the cost of growing is a little bit of extra body fat on you for you know a period of time, not as freaky pumps, you know, you're not covered in veins or whatever, then fuck it, man, that's what you got to do. You know, don't be discouraged by getting a little bit softer for the fact, uh, or because it's for the sake of growing. And then you'll be able to cut down, and you should have a little bit more muscle mass after the end of that little process. You know, so the guys who are too afraid to bulk up, long-term gains, you know, if I shake a fucking Magic 8 ball, not likely. Right? And same thing with guys who are afraid to cut down. Because I'm not going to say you can't just continue gaining weight perpetually. But from my experience, I find it's much easier to bulk for a period of time. Usually pretty long. And then do kind of a short, pretty serious dieting phase. Where I really drop down to a calorie deficit. Like I really do have to track and make sure that I'm under a certain limit. So that I can lose body fat progressively over the course of that little... You know dieting phase but 
a reasonably long bulk, but eventually, I mean, the simplest way to put it is I just fucking get tired of food, you know? Like, not because I'm like, oh, I'm not hungry, I'm going to stop the bulk. But I do reach a point where, as the bulk progresses, I'm eating more and more calories to continue gaining weight. And it's not like I could ever... Mm. Oh, goodness. It's not like I could ever eat 10,000 calories per day on a consistent basis. Uh, it's just not fucking maintainable. You know, even upwards of 5,000 to around 6,000. That's as much as I can do on a daily basis for just a short period of time, like only probably month, two months, and then it's just fucking too much, you know, I can't keep pushing it, uh, literally to the point where, you know, my body itself, it's like I'm just not fucking hungry at all, so when I ended my last bulk and started dieting down, that first week, I was eating like fucking 1,400 calories. And not because I was trying to, like, crash diet, but just because I wasn't fucking hungry, you know? My, um, just my appetite, everything, it's like, in a way, your body kind of, uh, you know, wants to stay in homeostasis. It wants to stay the same size, the same everything. So, in order to change, you've got to give it a stimulus which is intense enough for it to fucking have to adapt. So... Be it your training, you know, obviously if you train like a fucking baby, that's not going to be intense enough for your body to say, holy shit, I got to fucking grow and prepare to do this again next time. If you just go to the gym like a chump, your biceps are going to be like, oh, yeah, heck yeah, another easy workout. No need to recover, we're good. Or, no, 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 of course they're going to recover, but no need to grow. They're good enough, right? And similarly with food, you know, if I just ate... 4,000 calories on a consistent basis. Eventually, I would reach a size where 4,000 calories was my maintenance, and I wouldn't gain any more weight, you know, no matter how hard I tried. Because every day, your body burns a certain amount of energy, and in order to stay the same body weight, you have to consume that same amount of energy, right? So, if my body needs 4,000 calories a day to just you know, maintain the amount of muscle I have and support, you know, my daily activity level, cardio, walking around, doing my normal shit, and a hard lift, then I've got to eat 4,000 just to you know, keep that routine up. And if I want to grow, i got to eat, you know, I like at least a 500 calorie surplus. I'm never too, like, specific with it like that, but I do make sure I'm eating enough food to actually be growing. And then, you know, that 500 extra calories, it's got to go somewhere. And part of it is just you know, nutrient partitioning because you're eating more. You're literally just taking in more mass than you're expelling. So it's got to go somewhere. Muscle and body fat, primarily. That's really the only fucking way to do it. There is no circumstance whatsoever where I could stay a 250-pounder, a 260-pounder by eating... 2,500 calories a day. It's just not fucking feasible. That's too low. That amount of calories per day is going to make me fucking shrink down to the size at which that's maintenance. And that's going to be fucking lighter. Right? So the point I'm trying to say here, apart from the fact that in some instances a bulk and a cut aren't necessary, and you shouldn't be a wuss about the fact that if you bulk up, you are going to get a little bit softer. And if you cut down, you are going to get a little bit weaker. Just fucking deal with it. But secondary to that, or honestly, maybe even more important than that, that I'm trying to get across to you, is the fact that calories are the number one factor which are going to determine whether or not you can make changes to your physique in terms of size and body fat percentages. You know, body fat, not distribution, but you know, the amount that you have on you. You know, there is no world in which you can fucking lose body fat eating 5,000 calories a day. Unless you're Michael Phelps and you're burning it off because you're swimming in like a fucking really cold pool for hours on end and you're constantly doing cardio. Now, if that's you, that's fucking badass. You're an Olympic athlete. You probably got a bazillion gold medals. 
but more than likely that is not you. So you're not gonna be able to fucking just chow down and stay lean eating as, as much food as you need. Right? If you wanna lose body fat, then there's no secret, there's no trick. Really, the only thing that you need to do is make sure that you're eating less calories than you're burning. So your body has to, you know, say, holy shit, I need more energy. Where am I gonna get it from? Well, there's no more food in my system. I already burned that all off. My, uh, my muscles aren't really full of that much glycogen because I'm not really eating that much. I guess I'm gonna have to oxidize some fucking body fat so I can, you know, run this shit. Right? Your body, uh, I'm trying to, it's almost like you're a car and you've got two gas tanks. One gas tank, let's call that like your, your reserve tank or whatever, right? That's your backup generator. That's the body fat that you have stored up. And then your other gas tank, which you're constantly filling, that's like the food that you're eating every day. So if you kind of stop filling up that gas tank, which you're usually you know, filling up every day, that's, you know, what I'm trying to compare to the food that you're eating, then you're going to have to go off that reserve. And, I mean, I'm not sure why this is so problematic to people. For the most part, lifters get it. We can all wrap our head around the fact that if you want to lose body fat, you have to eat less calories. Adding cardio is going to help that substantially. Um, I know you're probably not going to do that, though. So if you can count your calories and be a big boy and actually track your shit and be honest with yourself... And weigh it on the scale, like, okay, eight ounces of you know, turkey with 30 grams of uh, buffalo sauce. Okay, I gotta look, I gotta read the nutrition label on the back of the sauce and count how many calories of, uh, or how many grams of fat I just ate. That's really the only fucking way to go about it. Now, when you do diets, or if like you have a bodybuilding coach and he gives you like a dieting plan, sure, you are following what he's telling you, you know. Two cups of rice in the morning with your eight ounces of ground chicken. But the special part isn't that you're eating rice and chicken or whatever. It's that throughout the entire day, the food that he's giving you to try and bring your body fat level down is only enough to put you in a calorie deficit. Or at the very least, maintenance. Because let's say you're already getting pretty lean and you don't want to over diet for, let's say you're doing a bodybuilding show. I, I think it's very strange that this is even a topic that requires discussion. And I know I'm not like, I don't put myself in the best position to give dieting advice because I'm fucking eating like treats and shit all the time. But, you know, if you're doing stuff that lets you get to this size, you do end up having a much higher metabolism. So you can't get away with fucking eating a ton of sweet treats and whatever else. But even though I'm doing that, you got to understand, this is all calories in, calories out. I'm not attesting to the fucking, you know, health effects of eating six donuts uh, for breakfast every so often. But I will say, if I can eat in a day seven, eight hundred grams of carbs, 150 grams of fat, and my 250 grams of protein, when I couple that with my training and cardio and everything else, I know that I'm going to grow. And once this bulk is over, I'm like, okay... It's time to trim down. I want to put myself in a situation where I'm losing body fat. Then I'm still going to eat my, you know, 250 grams of protein or so. Around maybe 75, 80 grams of fat. And I'm going to cut my carbs all the way down to fucking you know, maybe 200, 250 grams per day or something. And no matter what sources all that shit is from, whether it's fucking, you know, spicy chicken sandwiches or uh, cereal or whatever. As long as at the end of the day, I hit those macros, I am going to be able to stay in a calorie deficit and burn body fat and get leaner. You know? Now, in a dieting phase, I am much more prone to eating much what you'd kind of consider like healthier, normal foods because they're more filling for the amount of uh, calories that are in them. If I eat a bowl of ice cream and I'm trying to diet down, I can eat about 800 calories and I'd probably be hungry in like an hour because it's not very filling. 
So when I dive down, I do eat foods that are much more, you know, or much less calorie dense. You know, I'm talking keto bread. I'm talking a lot of egg white omelets with just hot sauce and a lot of like, you know, chopped spinach and shit. Stuff where I can be full, but not have a ton of calories. So take with that what you will. You know, if you see, uh, typically it's body positive characters. Uh, they do not love the idea of calories in, calories out. And, I mean, they are wrong, 100% fucking wrong. But I can understand why they wouldn't really want to you know, kind of follow that logic. Because it's, I mean, it kind of makes food a little bit of a chore. You know, like before I was bodybuilding, as serious as I am now, and I was just like a fucking kid in high school, you know, I was eating just like just fucking stupid shit, like whatever. Oh, I'm hungry for this, okay, I eat it, whatever. Like that's sort of, my, that was my approach. And once you get into calorie tracking and like you're tracking your macros and like you're, you know, how much protein is in and everything, people kind of have this misconception that that's gonna, ruin their perception of food and they're like oh I don't want to look at food like it's numbers uh, I want to just be able to enjoy it you know I don't want to feel bad for eating uh, you know this or so but if your goal is to actually change the way you look and you fucking build you know and turn it into something that you want to then that's just part of the deal you got to accept it and really I only see the fucking benefits you know Nobody starts tracking their macros and then says, wow, I hate that I have to do this. Actually, well, I feel like they say that in a kind of joking way. But, I don't know, for me, I always kind of, like, whenever I eat something, I always know how many calories I'm eating. Within a pretty reasonable range of estimation. Just because I look at a, you know, you give me, I order a fucking burger at a restaurant. Oh, that's 40 grams of carbs worth of bun. No, it's kind of, I can tell this is sort of a fatter cut of a, a beef. I'm probably getting like 20, 30 grams of fat, including the mayonnaise or whatever. And then, eh, that's probably about 40 grams of protein worth, worth of patty. Like that sort of thing. But, fuck man, that's just part of the game, you know? <clears throat> Nobody wants to gain a freaky amount of muscle and look nuts. Because <laughs> they want to do everything that a fucking normal average Joe is doing so I say once you start tracking your macros you're not gonna want to look back you are not gonna want to freaking look back so I think that's all I gotta say that is my conclusive note so uh, final statements train hard hit your protein goals if you gotta grow fuck man start eating and if you can tell you're kind of pushing it body fat wise, you, you want to bust your abs out again, you're going to have to deal with being a bit more strict with your calories. And there's just no other way to go about it. Oh, jeez. That's probably one of my least favorite feelings. Is getting in the car when it's cold. <sighs> and having to wait for it to heat up. But, <clears throat> whatever. Whatever, just gotta deal with it. That does make me a little bit jealous of anybody living in like Florida or California. It's always fucking warm. But no matter. Let's focus on what actually matters. What's the plan for chest today? Not exactly certain. But part of me kinda wants to go a little bit lighter to start. So usually, I start off with like, you know, heavy Smith incline or heavy barbell incline bench, and then move on to lighter movements. But, I think today I want to start with some bent over cable press. So like, you know, moderate weight. And the sets will be reasonably controlled, like the reps will. I won't just be throwing around as much weight as possible. So, I think I'll move from something like that for a few sets to maybe incline smith to chest press to cable flies. That's my loose idea 
of what the workout is going to look like, just sort of based off of a freaking off-the-cuff sort of plan, you know. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't know if I would recommend this, well, actually I probably would not recommend that approach to a beginner. Uh, if it's like year one of your workout journey, right, and you're working out consistently, I think it's going uh, Oh, goodness. <clears throat> I think it's going to be in your best interest to have workouts written out and really follow a plan. Um, I'm not like a huge like fan of getting a coach just because I kind of like, I like everything that comes along with me taking control of everything for myself. It's kind of like a, you build something with your own two hands type deal. It's more valuable. That's at least you know, my kind of mentality about it but as a beginner I'm just fucking copying other people's workouts right I'm watching like a Callum Van Moga chest day I'm like oh that's all right perfect heavy pressing and then heck flies and cable press and oh not or you know random shit like that there's no uh as a beginner you gotta remember a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of coming up with workouts it's already been done you know there's basic chest workouts all over the fucking place. <sighs> or any kind of workout. So, I think it's going to be in your best interest just so that you don't have, you know, to deal with so much, like, thought and decision making that you're not really, you know, equipped to do. Because as an early stage lifter, you know, you're not the most experienced. So it's going to be probably more beneficial for you to, like, maybe talk to some of your buddies, have them write a workout plan. I've done that before to, um, I kind of like indoctrinated a bunch of dudes from my gym or from my friend group into lifting for a bit. And I like wrote out some workout plans for like each body part. And it's not like a specific workout like that is special, you know, because for a chest day, you could substitute any kind of pressing movement with like a, you know, inclined dumbbell or barbell or Smith. Like it's, it's all just pressing movements and cable flies and whatever else. But I think just sticking with a set routine for a while, really focusing on progressive overload, you know, getting stronger as a beginner, that's kind of what you should be focusing on. And then just getting training experience under your belt, you know. And when it comes to progressive overload, do not neglect that. Uh, I don't really talk about it much because for me, I've kind of gotten to a point of size and strength where really increasing weight beyond what I'm capable of now it's not necessarily going to directly correlate with more size you know like the uh, the ratio or kind of the correlation of strength and size as a beginner it's fucking direct you know as a beginner as you gain size you will gain strength guaranteed and then same thing in reverse if you start curling heavier dumbbells your biceps should be bigger you know but when you get to a point of, you know, size or progress, I mean, I don't need to try to uh, progressively overload my squat to like 600 for 10. It's just not as practical. So I don't talk about progressive overload as much because my, the weights that I use are pretty consistent. You know, it's enough that I need to stimulate whatever I'm hitting, but I do try to push it, you know. And then of course I still do try to go a little bit heavier but as a beginner, that's where you're going to see the most progress in your lifts. You know, I remember when I was uh, when I was starting out, me and one of my friends, Connor, were like racing to see who could get like uh, a higher bench. And that was back when, you know, my one rep max in the basement, where the home gym wasn't even really a home gym. It was just a, you know, a dumbbell bench or a barbell bench and a, you know, 300 pounds of weight. That was when I was doing like 235. That was my one rep max. But, yeah, sometimes I kind of forget, especially for the earlier lifters. Strength progress, that's also part of it. So don't get too obsessed with really light dumbbells as a beginner. There's all sorts of different mechanisms of action for hypertrophy. You know, like uh, fucking fascial stretch training. FST7, I'm talking about really filling up your fibers with stretching them out or whatever, but uh, 
I can say with certainty, mechanical tension, just the amount of fucking load that your muscles are dealing with in a working set, you know, I'm talking maybe, it's a wide range, but I'd say for the most part, I stick to around eight to 20 reps for all my sets, kind of an even mix, bounce around there. As long as you're really pushing it and you hit muscular failure within that bound, that is, uh, within that rep scheme, then you're doing something right. And the more you lift, then you can start really being like, okay, I want to do these kind of dumbbell curls instead of these ones because these feel better. And, you know, you just get more kind of fucking accustomed, right? If you jump straight into a fucking race car and they put you in a, in a, in a suit with your helmet, you're like, holy crap, I got to fucking learn how to control this thing. But then once you've done that for like three years, when you get into the car, you're not worried about how to like totally control it. You're going to be like, well, I got to adjust the seat. You know, you'll gradually start making more and more minute adjustments to your training. And that should kind of correlate with you getting better at it. I've made this analogy before. You should almost be like a, uh, a target seeking missile when it comes to your training. If the target is gains, then do a routine for a few months, see where it takes you, and then make adjustments accordingly. You know? So if you think you need more rest, or you need more calories, or you need to just increase your training intensity, or maybe lower your volume, stuff like that, if you make a positive change, that's gonna point you in the right direction. And then you'll never get there. You know, there's no, I mean, just in life, right? perfection, it's not real, it doesn't exist. But you can constantly improve. That's pretty much as close as we can get. I take rest days every so often if I actually need them. But somebody who's more inclined to go to the gym no matter what, all the time, and I'm not saying like, you know, work th through injuries and like work out while they're still hurt, but I just mean somebody who is, I mean, in a sense, like an unstoppable force, in a sense that they're, uh, you know, just always going to hit the gym no matter what they're going to get more gains than the guy who's more inclined to say, oh man, I think I should take a rest week. I think I'm due for a rest week. Right? So, I'm not saying you have to be one or the other. Obviously, the in-between state, which contains all lifter under the fucking sun. But the more of a nut you are, it could help you be more disciplined. You know, in a sense, I feel like I'm, I've said the word, in a, the phrase in a sense a hundred times, uh, in a way, I think I'm a little bit spoiled because I don't really think I need much discipline, per se. Like, if you looked at, I mean, what's the definition of discipline? I feel like everybody always says, like, doing shit when you don't want to do it. I mean, sometimes if I'm really tired or if I had a, a seriously long day of, like, school or work or some kind of shit... I guess not so much work now, but I mean, I'll have some days where I'm like fucking six till eight working on schoolwork. Now, usually that's just because I've procrastinated, but still it happens. Uh, and then, you know, I've got to take my pre at like 10 and go hit on the craziest day of leg day. I'm like, holy fuck, dude, I'm fucking tired. I'm still going to go. So in that kind of instance, I do got some discipline. But nine... 19 out of 20 times, I really just want to lift. You know, it's my fucking thing. Right? You're not, um, I'm trying to think of a comparison. You're not going to tell a fish not to swim. You know, you're not going to tell a monkey not to swing from the vines. It's just what they like doing. You know? So, when it comes to you know, motivation and like David Goggins style, like, you know, get up when you don't want to and go grind, that kind of shit. Um, if that's you and you really have to fucking force yourself to get in the gym, and it, that's a challenge as well, then I'm not knocking you for it, but I think you should definitely try to find the aspects of the gym which you enjoy the most. Like maybe, you know, doing sets where you're actually progressively overloading and you're getting a little bit stronger over time. Maybe that really gets you excited. Or you know, just whatever. You know, if you can focus on the positive stuff, then that should make you more excited about the gym. And then that initial battle of even going will become a bit smaller because you won't even be thinking about it as like a grand scheme of like, oh crap, okay, fuck, I 
I gotta go to the gym today, okay. You'll be a bit, you'll be uh, maybe a little bit more hyper focused on like, okay, I'm gonna do this set today. If you can make it such that uh, in your mind, the idea of going to the gym is, it's not even a question, it's a guarantee, then I think that's probably one of the biggest steps there is to actually making gains. If somebody who every time they went to the gym, they had an awesome fucking baller workout, but you know half the time they took rest days, or half, the, or not rest days, like half the time they skipped the gym, uh, you know they take like a month off every so often, they're gonna get shit results compared to the guy who can go in day after day after day and have you know decent workouts. Not to say that you should just go in every day and fuck around, but the more you do it. <laughs> the better you'll get at it, and then the better you get at it, the better results you'll get, and that's just a fucking positive feedback loop. So, not that any of this is fucking groundbreaking information. We all know that the longer we do shit, and the more we practice stuff, the better we'll get at it. But you know, sometimes even simple things need to be kind of reiterated, and they're worth sort of thinking over in your fucking mind, even if it seems obvious. If you saw somebody doing a fucking really shit routine and they were complaining about getting no results, <laughs> I almost feel like that's, you kind of have to tell someone like, hey man, maybe you wouldn't hurt your hand if you didn't hit it with a hammer. Like there's, they're fucking themselves up. They're not really, that, that made more sense in my head than it did coming out. So totally forget about that part. But if somebody's doing a shit routine and then they're complaining about their shit results, you know what they're due for, it's just a simple reality check. And if you can do that, if you can actually kind of look at yourself and your routine and a bunch of other shit objectively and realize like, okay, this is the stimulus, right? This is what I'm doing and this is the result that it's giving me. You know, if you can actually look at that objectively, right? Don't say like, oh, my, my shitty genetics or oh, blah, 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 don't blame anything else. If you can honestly say to yourself, like, okay, this is where I am and it's because I've been doing this for like two years. If you can do that, I think it'll be a bit easier for you to say, okay, this is where I want to be. And I think doing something more like this will help me get there. So, basic accountability speech. But enough of that. E freaking enough of that. So, quads will be back probably for next leg day. It kind of sucks whenever I, I tweak something. And this wasn't even a fucking lifting related incident. This is just me being a fucking fool when I crashed my bike. But whatever. Work around it. Work a freaking around it. I've, um, I've gradually become a little bit more, uh, let's just say wise in my training to the point where now I can say, all right, my knee is a little bit sore. I can tell it's a little bit inflamed. It kind of hurts doing leg extensions. I'm going to take a break. I think if we reverse time a few years, I would probably still try to do a really hard quad day, even though it hurt my knee, just because of my mind. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Thug it out. I think the more of those you know, minute changes that I make in a positive manner, the better. The freaking better hamstrings. I can still feel they're fucking pumped up. Cardio and calves tomorrow morning, followed by chest in the evening. That's it, man. More food to come. Uh, I didn't weigh myself this weekend because I'm back at my, uh, I was back at my parents' house. And the only scale here, I don't think is accurate. Because I weighed myself at school one day and I was like 258, whatever. Or no, no, yeah. And then when I came here, the scale read like 263. And this is on the same day. And I know I did not eat or drink five pounds worth of stuff in that, um, you know, in the time between my weighings. So I think I need to get a really fancy pants scale. I said this either the in the last video or the one before that one. Uh, you know, the last thing I want to do is, um, you know, step on the scale and then have it say that I'm like 260, but really I'm only like 253. You know, that's stupid, right? I want a real accurate reading. So 
Maybe I'll if we can look up on Amazon or something like a real fancy pants scale, accurate to the tenth of a pound. But until then, I know I'm just gonna be eating enough food to continue gaining weight. And fuck, man, we're getting pretty big. So a nearing 260, bulked. Uh, I saw some comments that said, or I saw one comment where it was like. If Sam's 260-ish now, um, I don't think I'm 260 on a consistent basis. That was like a, a spiked weight. I think right now I'm really floating around 257, and it's going to gradually keep increasing. But the comment was like, if he's 260 now, he's going to be 235 stage weight. That's not, that's too heavy for classic. Dude, no, 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 come on. I was 235 at the beginning of, or at the end of the dieting phase, the end of the cut that I did before this bulk, and that was not show ready. You gotta remember, bulked up weight does not mean I've gained 30 pounds of muscle. Not even fucking close. But I am getting pretty big, so uh, it's not like I mean, I kind of I feel like I am just sort of a meathead at heart. I really am just like getting big for the sake of it, because I like it. But when you're this big, you gotta step on stage eventually, you know. So don't worry, that will happen. But not let's just say it isn't planned. It's not planned yet. But it will definitely happen. And honestly, maybe sooner than expected. Like if I it this is maybe a little bit of a drastic goal, but if at the end of this bulk I'm high two sixties, like Maybe even 270 on a really crazy day of eating, which that's a pretty big goal. I don't know if I'll get up that high, but 265-ish morning weight off season, and I'm relatively lean too. I think that might be cute to do a, you know, a little little five foot eleven. I, I forget what class that is. I don't remember. There will be a show eventually. How about this? I'll update you. You'll be the first one to know because the day that gets decided, these videos are no longer going to say bulking and cutting. It's going to say show prep day one or 30 days till you know, whatever. But you know, don't get too excited about big shit like that. Uh, I think it's a little bit of um. It's a little bit of a motivation killer, in a way. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into this. When you get into like really getting hyped up about a massive goal, like if your goal was, of course, if I'm making a video, it's about lifting. So let's just say your goal is to win a bodybuilding show. If you haven't done it before, then this would be an amateur show, but whatever. If that's your goal, then I think really thinking about it too much uh, it can almost sort of take away its value, you know? Like, if that's your goal, the more you think about it and, like, you get excited about it, like, if you kind of visualize yourself achieving it all the fucking time, and you're like, yeah, oh, my God, it's going to feel so good. You're like, you're, like, thinking about it. You're just, like, you know, you crack a smile. Just even just thinking about it, you're like, oh, nice. Oh, my God, that's going to be great. Uh, in a sense, and I'm not saying don't have big-ass goals, but... I feel like what can happen is you can sort of desensitize yourself to it to the point where visualizing something like that and really like hyper fixing fixating on it in a which is kind of weird because of course I do think you should do that you should be kind of almost delusional with your goals to you know, aim really fucking crazy big but in a way you can kind of desensitize yourself to it because you're getting a dopamine release in your fucking mind that's not that dissimilar to actually fucking achieving it, you know? So, it's like, if you do that too much, it just kind of sounds like, you know, high school kid fucking campfire ideas. Like, dude, let's start a business, bro. Oh, that's going to be sick. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really translating the idea of that as well as I would like to, but sort of uh, the next level of that sort of idea is 
it's good to kind of aim for something crazy ass big like that. But in a way, I like the fact that it's so far away. You know? And if you can kind of cut that down to size on a day by day scale, then every day you get hyped up about taking a step forward towards it. And then if that's what makes you excited and you enjoy the process of doing that, then there's nothing that's going to fucking stop you, man. Right? If my end all be all goal was like, you know, 250 pounds of lean on stage or whatever, if that's what I was like, that's my end goal, that would be awesome. All good. But the fact that I can get excited about just doing my lifts, making weight progress, getting bigger and stronger, you know, progressing my fucking build, if that's what really gets me going, then I don't even have to really think about that end all be all goal. I just get to enjoy the process of doing it. So I think that's really what I'm trying to say. You know, cut down whatever you want to do to small day by day steps. And if you can get excited about it, I think you're setting yourself up for success. You know, usually I would think that I'm only going to have to limp down the stairs when my quads are pumped up. But even walking down the steps today with hamstrings destroyed, I was, I had to use caution. I had to, I had to take each step very methodically. I mean, not like I was about to fall over, but you know what I'm saying. If your legs have ever been fatigued to the point of Let's just say instability, where you get a little, just a little nervous when you're going down the steps. You use a little bit of extra care, almost as if they're like slippery. You make sure each step is very, uh, very thought out. I've never done it before, but <laughs> I'm sure it would not take much to just throw me down those two flights of steps if I, like, if my knee buckled or something. Because there's not much to fucking... I mean, let's think about this. How much fucking potential energy is in this system when I'm at the top of, you know, 20 feet of consecutive steps? 20 feet, that's, uh, that's like, what, five meters? Maybe six meters? And I'm about 110 kilograms times 9.8. Fuck, man, that's a lot of energy. And... In a more real sense, not even looking at it from the math, let's just say that would fuck me up. So, that would affect the pump. Or at least it would definitely affect the recovery of the lift. Uh, <laughs> as, um, as embarrassing as it is to say. Actually, no, it, it's not embarrassing. This is conducive with gains. There's an elevator at that gym. A few steps around the corner, and instead of going up the stairs, you take the elevator. And I take that thing all the fucking time. I don't know why I didn't take it today on the way down. But I definitely took it on the way up. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, man? If there's a... Take the path of least resistance, I say. Except for when it comes to your training. That's when you're gonna want to take the path of most resistance. But, yeah, hamstrings wrecked. I'm not... I'm kind of conflicted a little bit. Because... I think that my left hamstring looks cooler, especially in like side poses. Like when I do that kind of side, like chest or tricep, I think my left hamstring looks cooler, but it's smaller slash weaker than my right one. Like every time I did a set of single leg curls, I did my right one first. Wait, actually, no, does that make sense? I can't remember. Either way, I think my left hamstring has kind of better insertions than the right one, at least for like kind of posing. And I'm not exactly certain why that is. My knees are at slightly different angles. Like, my left knee, compared to my right one, has a slightly different camber to it, which sometimes on some calf and hamstring machines makes me feel a little bit more comfortable doing one leg at a time rather than both at once because sometimes I feel like I bias the right one a little bit more than the left one or vice versa so anytime you have kind of a just like a biomechanic imbalance like that and not I'm not talking like one muscle is bigger than the other I mean like maybe one elbow kind of bends at a different angle than the other one so doing preacher curls with both arms at once doesn't feel natural for you 
with movements like that, where if you notice something like that on your build, yeah, just kind of stick to single-sided stuff. For the most part, I try to stick to double-sided movements um, in general, just because, I mean, you know, it's really, it's just fucking faster. It's more efficient. For me to do a set of bicep curls, or for me to do an arm day where I do both arms at once on pushdowns and curls, rather than, you know, one arm, one arm, one arm, one arm. I mean, I'm literally doing twice the amount of work, at least time-wise, doing single-sided stuff than I am when I do double-sided movements. But then, you know, thinking about it the other way, I get to focus on each side individually, and you know, instead of splitting up my focus between, you know, flexing each bicep, I guess I just do one and then the other. So kind of, you can kind of argue either case. But yeah, sometimes like single-sided, like with those hamstring curls in the beginning, uh, lighter just so I could really squeeze each one to failure. And then, you know, uh, some movements just fucking require double leg loading, like the RDLs. I see single leg RDLs done sometimes, but that's just, that looks a little bit unstable to me, to the point where I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's something I need to really delve into much. But yeah, hamstrings wrecked. I think, I was thinking this halfway through this hamstring lift, I'm pretty sure that today was supposed to be a quad day based on the split that I wanted to do. Cause I think I was supposed to do legs or quads, chest, hamstrings, arms. So instead of quads, I did hamstrings today. So I think I'm just going to roll with it. So now that means I'm going to go hamstrings, chest, quads, arms, and that'll be the order from here on out. And that's not a split I would necessarily recommend to everyone because there's no back or shoulder training. Uh, but I am going to try it for a little while because I think relative to everything else, my legs are weak, arms are weak. My chest isn't weak, but I, I want it to be bigger. And by relative to everything else, I really just mean relative to my strong points. You know, like when I bust out a lat spread, that shit's pretty fucking wide. But a side chest without a pump. I want some more thickness. Same thing with a front and back double bicep. I want like, more roundness to the triceps and everything else. So by taking out back and shoulders, which are pretty, I mean, combined, that's a pretty substantial amount of fucking muscle. That's a little bit more energy I can use, you know, recovering and growing, ideally, everything else. So that's, uh, I mean, I already said this in the pose down, but that's kind of my approach right now. Not like a complete way of the giant pumpkin, uh, Devin Laird style. That's where, uh, I don't know how well known or well used that phrase is, but in arm wrestling, if somebody, i making a lot of arm wrestling references today, but professional arm wrestlers, they don't need to compete with both arms, right? They got the right-handed side and the left-handed side, or you know, right-handed competitions and left-handed competitions. So some guys just have a freakishly larger right arm and they just train that one specifically and they don't even mess with the other one. So the right arm is just fucking jacked and the other one is like completely normal looking quagmire style. So, you know, following that logic, muscles that get trained are going to grow and muscles that don't won't. So if I chill out on my back and shoulder training, they're going to stay the same size and my logic is everything else will catch up, or at least a little bit. I mean, I'm only doing this for like a month, maybe a month and a half before I decide to keep doing it. Uh, a month, and month, month and a half is not a huge amount of time muscle building wise, but it is long enough where I should start to see a little bit of development uh, as long as I you know, keep my calories up and I stay in a good surplus, which so far I have been doing so far I have been doing pretty well so I don't see why I mean not even I don't see why I know there is still growth to be had this bulk and if I didn't then I would stop the bulk die it down for a little bit and start fresh again so that's kind of my cue and 
considering that with this bulk specifically, I have had a little bit of a different approach than normal. Um, in previous bulks, or I guess you could call it off seasons, uh, I jump straight to a crazy amount of calories and I just keep it locked right there. Like I try to eat like 5,000 onward. I don't really adjust it or anything. I just stay there because I know it's a surplus. And that was my logic, you know, I want to eat a ton of calories as quick as possible, put on as much weight as quick as possible. Uh, and I did. My weight fucking skyrocketed up to like 250, 250 something. But then I just couldn't break past a fucking 250 barrier. You know, because I think I oversaturated myself calorie wise. So now, with this one specifically, the first few months, uh, or the first two months, really eased into it. Uh, like I didn't just jump straight to a crazy amount of calories. Honestly, the first month going from dieting, where I limited myself to about like 2,500 to like the first 30 days of the bulk, all I was really eating was just as much as I was hungry for. And that wasn't a ton. I was doing like 3,000, like a little more than 3,000 calories. And then over the course of time from then to now, I've gradually increased and increased and increased it up to like upper fours, about 5,000. So that's put me up to the 260 mark ish of course i got it i need to get back up to that weight i'm kind of i kind of had a little bit of a dip after the whole arnold uk trip uh but yeah around 260 is the full bulked weight right now which once i get back to will you know be back up at where i want to be and that's fucking 10 pounds heavier than the peak was before like on the last bulk if i were to go a few days with scrappy eating or go on like a big trip like i just did my weight would be at like 240 like 240 would be my light weight. So now after fucking a few days of kind of scrappy, not scrappy training, but definitely scrappy recovery, like my sleep was kind of jacked because we were doing so much stuff. And then I wasn't eating enough food. And I'm not, I'm not saying that as an excuse. I'm just saying like, as a matter of fact, that is what happened. My light weight was 250. And I, I kind of said that like very somberly in like two videos ago. I'm like, fuck, I'm 250, shit. But you gotta remember, 250 is fucking heavy, man. So, only more to come. But yeah, so the next, honestly, it's almost as though the bulk is really only starting now, you know? Like, now is when I'm actually really starting to ramp up the calories and eat seriously. To the point where I'm actually, like, having to plan out, like, okay, I need to eat at least 3,000 calories by 1 o'clock so that I don't have to force feed later on. Like, stuff like that. Like, it's actually starting to really kick into gear now. So, you know, another few months. And as long as I keep gaining weight steadily, or at least reasonably steadily, the bulk's not going to end, you know? The only way that I'm going to say, all right, let's, let's start the cut. It's time to diet down. I need to take a break from bulking up. Is this my weight plateaus, you know? Uh, I don't necessarily have a limit on the length of the bulking phase, as long as... It's fucking working, you know? So the last bulk was only two, I mean, nearly a year, kind of like a third of a year, eight months or so. Amen. If in three months I'm still gaining a little bit of weight, even like, you know, pound every few weeks, I'm going to keep pushing. Unless I, you know, for whatever reason, come to the conclusion, all right, I got to chill out. Let's back off the food. Let's reset. Let's diet down. See where I'm at. And then come back fresh again. So if you like the bulking videos, then you're in luck. Because they are not going anywhere soon. Not freaking anywhere. And that's fine by me. I love getting heavier. Because that means I'm really making tangible progress. Like I like dieting down. It's cool. It's fun to be fucking lean and diced. And I, I don't say that like... Like, oh, you know, it's kind of cool. Like, it is fucking cool. Hosing down, really lean, like, thin skin on my stomach. Abs are fucking going nuts. Veins all over the place. That is really fucking sick, and I love it. But I also understand the fact that if I want to get to there, if I want to get to that state bigger than I was last time, then I've, I've got to grow first, you know? You can't just jump straight to a fancy paint job. I've, uh, I've said this analysis before. You can't just throw a fancy-ass paint job on a beater and suddenly it's going to be sick. And what I mean by that is if you're kind of a beginner, you're kind of a intermediate lifter, then 
just really dieting down and getting super lean um, every so often, no problem with it. But for that to be your end goal, like to just be a lean 160, fuck man, I think you're aiming too low. You know? So it's cool to be lean. Everybody loves having abs. Uh, it's just fucking, I mean, it's cool. But look, man, at the cost of a few months of having a little bit higher body fat than normal, as well as having to deal with eating in a calorie surplus, which for some people can be kind of a fucking hassle. I don't know if I'd say a lifter's paradise, but certainly close. Fucking every freak under the sun coming out of the woodworks all in one place. Can't help but smile thinking about it. But until then, I'm not gonna stop the grind eating nuts. So this is a cardio trip. It is a little bit later in the day than I would like. I kind of, let's just say I maximize sleep. And then in a more honest way, I slept in until like one o'clock. But either way, very well rested. So 30 minutes of cardio followed by arms later this evening should do me fucking well. So I don't know if I need to get into a whole cardio shtick like I did last time. Um, obviously, you should be doing it. It's good for you. But whatever. We all get the gist there. My goodness. So, I guess this may be late. Because if this video is on a delay, then it's kind of past. But I'll be there all three days. All three freaking days. I got to go for one day last year. I think it was a... I think it was a Saturday or something. So, man, it was freaking cool. What else is there to discuss? Bulk going strong. Uh, well, actually, not as strong as I would like. I was like 259 this morning. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the scale I have at my house is off. I still need to... Somebody was telling me I've got to get a... Like an industrial scale. Like one of the ones um, where it's like a big-ass metal pad. And then the readout is on like a little red LED indicator instead of just a fucking... Um, like on the scale itself. Because you gotta think. <laughs> How many scale companies do you think are out there making making the number artificially lower? <laughs> so you feel better about yourself when you use their product. I wouldn't put it past them. I would not put that past somebody. So, if you want an accurate reading, probably going to be in your best interest to get a semi-accurate scale. I, I wouldn't be too paranoid about it, but Definitely something that could be worth considering. So, let me see what else was I about to say. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Oh, yeah. So, in terms of tracking your weight, there's only one time to do it. I see dudes hop on the scale at like 9 o'clock at night after they've already lifted. They've drank a fucking ton of water. They've eaten all the food that they eat during the day. They're wearing a full set of clothes and their shoes, and they've got their phone in their pocket. Do you really think that's going to be an accurate fucking you know, portrayal of your body weight? No, not even fucking close. And for one, of course, you're wearing all this extra shit. Not what you'd call body weight. And then for two, you've got the amount of food and water that you've eaten throughout the day, too. My body weight can change fucking drastically from morning to evening. I can wake up at 255 and go to bed at 263 if I was a little bit dehydrated in the morning and then completely full belly in the evening. So anybody who you, you know you catch weighing themselves at you know random times during the day, I mean you're not, you're just not giving yourself accurate readings, man. You know, it's almost like that number I'm not gonna say it doesn't mean anything, but you know, with the fact that your weight is already gonna fluctuate day by day in general, and then you add extra variabilities to it, it just doesn't make sense, man. Your weight is right in the morning, you go to the bathroom, clear out your system, and then hop straight on the scale, no clothes. That's what I consider your weight. So, if you're, uh, if you're all giddy that you hopped on the scale at your gym and you weighed 201, but you're wearing a fucking pair of, uh, like, heavy boots, thick sweatpants, and a hoodie, and your phone's in your pocket, Guess what, man? You've still got a ways to go. You've still got some mass to gain. And uh, that's not as a rip. 
I remember I always get excited when I hit a new number on the scale. But you've got to be able to kind of understand the situation that's giving you that number. So really the point I'm trying to say there is if you're in a dieting phase or a bulking phase and you know, day by day you know, you're bouncing up and down three pounds or so, three might be a little bit extreme. Like on a consistent basis, I definitely bounce around like two pounds around whatever my weight is. So if you're looking at it from a day by day context, don't get too upset if one day you're fucking light and one day you're fucking heavy. What you're really looking for is that like overarching trend. If you zoom in, of course, it's going to be super fucking jagged. But if you kind of back up, widen the scale, and you can see that you're consistently gaining weight, bulking context, very good. Dieting context, you are totally fucked. But that's sort of what I'm trying to say there. Your weight's going to bounce around just, I mean, all sorts of fucking factors. Just how fed you are, how many carbs you've got in your system, your sodium intake, your water intake. It's all just, it's all just fucking whatever. The more consistent you can be with the foods that you eat, the amount of water that you drink, and the times that you go to sleep, it will kind of level off that variability and make your weight fluctuations a little bit more concise. Because even though I'm kind of, like I get the fact that my weight's going to bounce around, I am kind of subject to the fucking like fallacy of waking up light, where... If I wake up at like 255 for whatever reason, maybe I didn't eat a lot of food one day and I, you know, I wake up extra light, I kind of feel like I have to you know, really get that weight back up. Like I kind of feel like a need to you know, get some more food down. And then on days where I'm extra heavy, it may make me a little bit more complacent with my calories. So really I've got to be a bit more zen in my approach. Just make sure I get my you know, 5,000 whatever in on a daily basis. And don't worry too much about the day-by-day -day fluctuations. And uh, let me clear this up. I feel like I always, uh, when I read these comments, I get a little, it irks me. It irks me a little bit. Uh, it's like, Sam, you're only working out four days a week. What about the other three? Not exactly. Not exactly. You know, I do hit every muscle group in four days. Except for shoulders, but that's just because I skip them for the most part. They're big enough. But legs, back, chest. No, no, no. Legs, chest, back, arms. And then this fifth day just becomes legs again. That's the loop. So in no way imaginable is that a bro split. Right? So the conventional idea of a bro split is hitting every muscle group once per week and splitting them up as evenly as possible. So what would that even look like? Maybe legs, chest, back, shoulders, biceps, triceps, calves? I don't, I don't even know. But no, I never in a bazillion years would recommend you hit every muscle group just once per week. Because it's going to recover before then, you know? If you're eating enough food, and even if you're dieting down, after like three-ish days, four days... Of, uh, let's say you hit your chest like a maniac. You know, my chest is going to be fatigued and still tired and worn out and sore tomorrow. In no way do I think hitting chest again tomorrow would do me any good. It would really just hinder my recovery for chest. And, uh, and just wouldn't get anything out of it. And then the day after tomorrow, I'd say probably same thing. Chest is not ready to get hit. And day after that... We're getting close. It's I could maybe do it. You know, every um two days of rest should be satisfactory as long as you are drink enough water and eat enough food and sleep well. I think two or three days after you hit something, no matter how hard you hit it, it should be ready to be hit again. And so that's kind of my cue, you know. Like what's the point of waiting longer than necessary to recover? And this kind of goes against uh like a Mike Menser vibe or I'm like Menser logic and theory because he's like you know you just hit it once a week and then let it grow for the whole week but it, it's not a week-long process at least not as far as I can tell you know if you hit your dry like let's say well everybody does push pull legs arm split pretty basic shit where you hit everything twice a week with a rest day after two days 
and you're ready to hit legs again. You know, this is pretty basic stuff. So that's sort of how I like it. But I do sp spread it out a little more. I don't hit everything once a week. I end up hitting every muscle group every eight days. But that's right there. It's close enough. You know, you don't have to follow the book to a T just because the book is just, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's freaking different. So that's why I always say, you know, no matter how much shit you learn online and you read about or you listen to people talk about working out, no matter how smart or big or small or how many PhDs they have in exercise science, that information is useful, but it's not more valuable than just trying a workout plan not for yourself and seeing results for you, man. You know, because a guy doing a lecture or like a video podcast talking about training, uh, and in no way am I disregarding that. I watch that shit all the time on I'm, I'm a fucking gym nut. What else am I going to watch? But you know, for the beginner and even the intermediate lifter, just keep going hard and see what works for you. You know, because your body is way fucking different than mine. And his body's way different than yours and blah, 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 and whatever, man. You know, like, fuck. Go hard. Train consistently every week. Eat your food and sleep well. Guess what? You're probably going to grow muscle. You know, this isn't a, it's not rocket science. It's complicated as people make it. But I was, uh, fuck. I was about to say something and now I forget. Went off on a tangent of muscle building. Totally unrelated, but uh, any Dune fans? Any Dune fans in the chat? I um, I saw the first one. Jesus, it was a freaking long. It was cool though, but I I wouldn't mind a director's cut down to like half, half the fucking time of that movie. I haven't seen the second one. I will eventually. And um, it was funny. My dad way back when uh, the first movie released. I don't know when, but. 90s, whatever. Uh, he said a bunch of his friends read the book and they were real excited for it and they all fucking walked out of the theater because the first movie was so bad. Oh my goodness. Getting back to actual training. Uh, to go. Yeah, fuck, man. I, I understand why people say this because on surface level, it makes sense. It makes logical sense. And uh, guess where I'm going with this fucking cardio talk. Um, oh, Jesus, dude. People don't seem to understand that there's more benefits to cardio than just burning, you know, an X amount of calories in 30 minutes. It's, it fucking, it baffles me. I don't, I cannot fathom it, you know? Like every video, like I'll sit, because I'm on fucking Instagram and TikTok 24-7. So I always see the clips where people cut out me talking about, like, you got to do your cardio even on a bulk. Top comment every time. Why would you do cardio on a bulk? The whole point of bulking is to gain weight and eat a lot of calories. So by doing cardio, uh, you're just fucking cutting down on that process. Why would you do that? And like I said, at surface level, you're not wrong. Because you're right. You are burning a certain amount of calories. So your total calorie expenditure of your body is higher. And so that means that if you want to gain the same amount of weight, you will have to eat a little bit more. But I'm not sure if you understand this, and not you, I'm talking to the people who say that, but if you burn calories, that doesn't just mean that they disappear into nothingness. You've literally created a need for your body to want to replenish those calories that you burned. You know, a guy who runs around all fucking day, fucking labor job, specially trained athlete doing like hours of intense activity or just fucking lifters like us cardio and really hard lifting guess what they're going to be hungrier and they're going to need to eat more food than a guy who's the same weight as them but just kind of fucking walks around all day and never even gets close to breaking the sweat because we're you know more active and we're literally burning through more fucking fuel so you're going to have to replenish it you know um, the car that is doing you know, more fucking burnouts and higher speeds and acceleration and whatever, and just burning more gas, he's going to have to fill up his tank more often because he's, you know, running through his energy storage. So I understand when you say, okay, I, cardio is going to hinder my gains because I'm cutting into my 
you know, my calorie surplus. But you gotta remember, there are a multitude of fucking benefits beyond just energy expenditure. For one thing, in your workouts, you will be less gassed. And fuck, man, if you get extra heavy, that's gonna matter. You know, I do my cardio like a, well, I, I do miss it on occasion. I'm not like a perfect lifter. I want to be, of course. Uh, but, you know, I do my cardio pretty fucking consistently, and I still get fucking gassed. You know? So if I didn't do any cardio, dude, if I do one set of really crazy leg press, it would probably fucking put me on the ground for 10 minutes. So, for one thing, in your lifts, you are going to be better at fucking managing your oxygen debt. Because, you know, every time you fucking hit a muscle to failure, fuck, man, it, it's need, it needs some blood in there, right? It's got to get re-oxygenated. So, if you got a, in a sense, kind of a higher lung capacity, and your cardio system is working at a higher rate, it's going to be easier for you to recover and then do another set. So, the last thing you want to do in hypertrophy training, right, aka lifting weights to gain muscle, is to have to end whatever set you're doing or reduce the intensity of whatever set you're doing because your lungs and your cardio gives out first, right? If I'm doing squats, I want to have to end the set or re-rack it or fucking fail a rep and put them on the safeties because my quads physically cannot do another rep and they can't exert any more force. I don't want to have to end the set because I feel like I'm going to pass out because I can't fucking get enough oxygen in my body to keep the set going, you know? So, it's not like I think if you don't do your cardio, you can't train. Obviously, you can. Fucking 90% of you guys are, you literally do that. But it is going to improve your training. Not only in terms of your actual performance, but it just feel better, man. You know? Nobody, you're not, let's just say this. Like, I want to train hard because there is a challenge aspect to it. It is enjoyable to do something and finish it and know that you just did something hard. But... I don't want to make it harder on myself for no reason, you know? So the better my cardio is, the less really fucking gassed and exhausted I am after my lift and in between my sets. So it's just more enjoyable to train, right? And then the higher your energy expenditure is, you know, the amount of calories your body burns every day, for one thing, just from existing, but also from the activities that you do and like, you know, breaking a sweat and training hard, that's gonna make you just leaner Right? Your baseline level of body fat will be lower because you're more fucking active, dude. No one is going to look at someone who, like, fucking jogs consistently and lifts weights and think, huh, I wonder why that guy's so lean. Huh, I wonder why that guy has abs. He must just be lucky. He must just have the, have the hit to genetic lottery, you know? He just, he's naturally lean because he, he just is, and he happens to exercise and do cardio daily yeah <laughs> not exactly right this is a situation where uh, there's a high ass fucking correlation you know so of course you can bulk up and get kind of soft but if you lift consistently you're just gonna look better man and not just look better you'll fucking feel better you're gonna have a better time just moving through the world when you're in shape and for some people that kind of sucks to hear because that's sort of a call to action like, fuck, man, I'm out of shape. But guess what? Well, I, I, I was going to try to say something motivating, but really this is kind of a, kind of not very nice at all. But guess what? Fuck, man, you got to deal with it, right? It'll take a little bit of time for sure, but you know, you're not so different from when you were a linebacker back in high school. It's just now you're not fucking working out twice a day like you were then. Just because, uh, and of course, I'm fucking, I sound like a snot-nosed kid because I'm still fucking young and fresh or whatever else, but, I mean, there's a reason why the 50-year-old dude in the gym who's still fucking jacked, and, uh, well, I guess if he's not natural, that's a little bit different, but the natural dudes who are still working out consistently, there's a reason why they're just fucking more active and they're having more fun. You, know? you gotta remember, you gotta, you gotta use it or lose it, right? I mean, I, uh, there's a pretty awesome clip, or not a clip, it's just a, like a, an x-ray of two thighs. One, and they're both of like 80 year old dudes. One of them, fucking filled with muscle to the brim. 
and then a little fat layer on top. And the other one, same size, like thigh, but fucking fat layer is literally two thirds of the leg. And then there's just a little bit of muscle surrounding the, uh, the femur, right, through thigh bone. And a you know, 70 year old who's doing consistent weight training, and a 70 year old who isn't. You know, of course, that's fucking way down the line. But you gotta remember, time passes for everybody. So you, know, you gotta get on top of that shit. So, uh, and this is kind of, I'm in a little bit of an interesting position when it comes to you know, hyping up and working out. Because obviously, I'm like taking it to the extreme, fucking total nutcase, gaining an absurd amount of muscle, and I hope to gain an absurd amount more. But that's sort of, that's one side of the scale. Like, that's what I like doing because this is just like my thing. I'm a total fucking nutcase about it. I probably take it too far. But in no way do I try to take away from the benefits of just lifting for its own sake. You know, not even necessarily going for extreme performance. Anybody, anywhere, going from a typical just day-to-day -day life, work, school, anything, if you add consistent weight training, and even better, if you add consistent cardio, you're just going to have a better time in general. You know, I cannot stress that enough. So, you know, if you've got a younger brother, or uh, you know, anybody at your house, if you're still living with your family, try to take one of them with you. You know, don't even tell them to do a really scrappy workout or anything. Just fucking bring them along. Slap them on the elliptical for like 20 minutes. When I was a kid, my parents would like take us all to the YMCA for the night. You know, they'd actually work out a little bit, like do weights or cardio. And you know, I'm like a 10 year old kid. I'm just fucking around. But in a sense, who knows? Maybe that was my indoctrination to the gym. Maybe if they didn't take me up there to just kind of play around on the cardio machines. What if none of this ever happened? Oh, crazy to think about. Maybe, okay, don't just bring your fucking younger siblings in to play around. I've seen that before, it's really fucking annoying. Like, they're grabbing the cables, putting the weight stack all the way to like the middle, and swinging around like Spider-Man. You know, maybe don't let them play around too much. But, eh, come on, come on, get them active a little. It doesn't even have to be weights. Fuck. Just, uh, I'd, I could say this with certainty. If you can break a sweat every day of your life, you're going to have a good time. You are going to have a good time. Dude, fuck, man. I felt like total shit that whole lift. Um, in a relative sense. Of course, I'm still doing my sets hard, but I could tell. I just feel a little scrappy. Not fun. Not fun. But if that's you, and then you still decide, all right, I'm going to go to the gym. Hey, push it, man. You'll feel better afterwards for sure. Even if you're going to still feel bad afterwards. Uh, but <clears throat> when I finish posing down, you know, when I look at myself at the pump, and I'm like, yeah, nice. When I go home later and, like, you know, I'm going to shower or whatever, or I'm going to wake up in the morning, and I see myself pumpless in front of the mirror, Am I going to say, what the fuck is that? I look like shit. Fuck. Put my clothes back on as quick as possible. Well, not exactly. Not freaking exactly. And, uh, I mean, this goes for anybody, regardless of, you know, your build. Because <clears throat> even dudes who are fucking, you know, jacked beyond belief. There's a reason body dysmorphia is such a thrown around term. Uh, fuck, man. I mean... I think, I mean, again, like I was saying in the, on the way here, sort of the mind leads uh, and then kind of a little, little bit of a branch off of that idea is your perception is going to play a very major role in your, uh, I mean, let's just say subjective levels of fucking, you know, happiness, right? When I look at, um, <clears throat> or, all I'm really trying to say, or kind of the what I'm boiling all this down to is I think for someone to have the mentality of going to the gym and working out and you know pushing themselves hard for the main driver of that action to be the thought process of oh, I look like shit fuck 
I can't keep looking like this anymore. I need to, you know, that's just so negative, man. Jeez. And I can't really, it's not like I could, if that's you, I'm, it's not like I could just say, oh, don't do that. And then suddenly you're going to be like, oh, whoa. Oh, sweet. This is great. You know, I can't, that's not what I'm trying to say. But I just find that any anything particularly negative is not going to be an awesome motivator. Definitely not long term. I mean, look, you're still going to get jacked. Somebody who goes to the gym consistently for years and, you know, gets reasonably smart about their diet in terms of using diet to actually, you know, improve their physique and make progress over time. I don't mean smart like, oh, never eat fucking fruit snacks. If you do that for years, you are going to look like you lift guaranteed, as long as you do it hard. Now, someone who is kind of excited about the prospect of gradual progress, likes the process, kind of enjoys pushing themselves, he is going to have a very good time. He's going to enjoy it. He's going to see, you know, month to month over time changes to his build. And that's going to hype him up and say, okay, let's keep going. I want to see more. And I'm not even talking about like an out of control spiral getting up to 300 pounds. I mean, just even on the path to going from like a 150 pounder to like a lean 180 pounder. That is an insane fucking jump. You know, don't get me wrong. But the guy who can enjoy that and in his mind focus on the positives more often than not he's going to have more fun he's just going to enjoy it whereas the guy who's constantly undermining himself and like oh I'm, I'm so fucking weak oh, oh i look like shit just just constantly having that sort of loop of thoughts running around your head day after day oh my goodness come on it's just not fucking cool you know and again, I'm not you, so I, I'm not going to try to control your thoughts, but if I were to have the choice between you know, trying to, let's just say, <clears throat> methodically put energy into, you know, kind of hype cool thoughts and sort of try to block out anything like, oh, I, oh my triceps are kind of fucking small, oh shit, oh fuck, I wish my legs were bigger, like it, anything like that. You gotta remember, thoughts will just pop up in your mind and you can't control them, right? That's your subconscious. You look at something, <clears throat> immediately thoughts are gonna bubble up in your mind, you know? But if you choose to keep putting energy into them, then you're just consistently like reiterating to yourself, I have a problem, I have a problem. And even if you do have a problem, like I'm not gonna say, if you're like a hundred pound overweight dude, I'm not trying to say, look in the mirror and say, I look great. That's not what I'm saying. But <clears throat> to constantly be thinking, oh, dude, I'm so, oh, fuck. Oh, man. Or like you're looking at some old pictures when you used to do sports in high school or whatever. And you're like, oh, God, it looks like, oof. Just to be focusing on kind of the present state of where you are and like, oh, this sucks. Just, ah. really, I'm just kind of. I'm trying to preach against having a negative mentality like that. Because you can look at something like that in two ways. You know, let's say that you, that's you. You got a real fucking long journey. Like, I'm, I'm not talking a few months. I mean, legit years of consistent training before you're going to have six-pack abs or a bicep vein or whatever else. You know, to be just constantly, oh, this sucks. Do you think that's going to make you excited to go hard? Is that going to make you excited to wake up in the morning? Like somebody who loves their job, uh, he's going to wake up and go, oh shit, this is going to be sweet. Let's hit this shit. Somebody who hates their fucking job wakes up and they fucking dread it. They wish they could go back to bed. Like the sound of their alarm does not excite them. It just fucking, it, almost, it ruins the zen that they feel when they're sleeping. You know? So, I'm not necessarily saying, uh, a good recommendation on how to change that I'm not a psychologist but if that's you and you can tell you're constantly just ripping on yourself yeesh man Urgh. you gotta you gotta change that up
that is a problem which will uh, will take dividends. Whereas being excited about potential progress and the grind itself, that's going to pay dividends, you know? So that's all I'm saying there, right? And that's, I know it's so silly. That's such a classic, like, you know, just be happy about it, you know, just, uh, or when someone says, uh, I, I've been seeing this quote float around Instagram a lot. It's like, if you can be in a bad mood for no reason, just be in a good mood for no reason. Doesn't that sound fun? Isn't that cool? It's not that fucking simple, man. Come on. Because uh, being upset about shit, it's very easy. And it's very comforting, too. There's kind of a self-loathing... There's kind of a comfort in self-loathing. In self-pity. Uh, because it's like, oh... Phew. Because you kind of adopt the mentality of, like, a victim to your circumstances. And then it's like, oh... Well, it's not my fault. It's my circumstances. Fuck, it's, it's because of this, this, and this that I'm where I am now. It's, I can't control that. No, poor me. And I don't mean just about lifting. You can, take this, you can take this in the context of fucking anything. You know? And sure, you might be right. You know, this isn't a perfectly fair world. People get fucked up pretty bad. You know, nobody, people don't all just start off with a happy-go-lucky setup. Like, family-wise, life-wise, fucking health-wise, anything, you know. But that's just kind of the cards you're dealt sometimes. And the people who actually make moves, even with a shitty hand, they get props, man. This, uh, <clears throat> it kind of, I think this is something as of late, like the last, maybe, maybe I just see it more because I'm on Instagram and TikTok or whatever else. But it's like a contest of who is the most just unlucky. Like, uh, it's like a pity contest. Come on. Not cool. Not freaking cool. You know, nobody gets props for having the most trauma. Right? But if that's you, I'm not invalidating you. But, fuck, man. You just gotta deal with it. And I, I don't mean it like that simply, but I, I kind of do. Like, you gotta take a realistic and actual, like not just a delusional, like, oh, it's, like take a legitimate, objective look at your circumstances and then decide what the best move is. You can't always make a perfect move, but even if you just make one small move, which puts you in a slightly better position than you were yesterday, the more of those that you can do constantly, the better. So this, uh, take with that what you will. And I, if anybody's watching this, I'm sure some specific aspect of your life came to mind when I kind of said, like, you know, what's something that you kind of hold yourself back from because you have a certain amount of excuses? If something immediately popped up in your head and you're like, oh, shit, yeah, I guess I probably should be doing X, Y, Z. Buckman. I'm not in control of your life, and neither will I benefit if you start killing it. But, I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to live in a world with more people on their A-game in all sorts of aspects of life? So, I was going to go hit arms, but they released a new nerf for my main and league, so I guess i got to skip the gym. Not true, of course, but come on. Look, man. Chronic? Well, maybe. I mean, I'm just saying this because I fucking want you to go to the gym on a consistent basis. But look, if you've got time for fucking four hours of a combination of Rust, Overwatch, League, um, I don't. I forget anything else. But. You can't spare one. You can't spare one hour for a lift. Come on. Not cool. Not freaking cool. But then again, I'm also just kind of in a bit of a video game hater. And don't worry, I'm not just saying that like a fucking outside perspective either. I think I've got... Oh, I couldn't even tell you how many hours of fucking Warzone I've played. 
over the years. But, you have to remember, all the hours I spent lifting actually left me with something. Now I get to walk around as a 250, yeah, tomorrow morning should be 257. 257 pounder on an empty stomach. Pretty cool. Pretty freaking cool. But, lay off. That's all I'm saying there. So, plan for tonight. Arms, heavy as all hell. That's all. I might even do some skull crushers for triceps. Uh, but, you know, triceps are still... I'm going to hit them relatively basically. Heavy pushdowns. Maybe skull crushers. <sighs> heavy dips. Well, machine dips, that is. I'm not really a big fan of just free... Like normal dips for triceps, at least. I don't mind it for chest, but for triceps, I can't. I never really end up feeling it. So, I don't know, maybe 10 or so sets of that. And then the same thing with curls, but of course, then I'm doing curls instead of pushdowns. <clears throat> I was going on a bit of a rant on the drive back from the gym yesterday, kind of hyping up how, you know, maybe your exercise selection isn't. <laughs> like absolutely insanely important and look I'm not saying that you should go to the gym and just do one movement but if that movement feels good and you're going hard and you you know it's it's one where you're actually hitting a muscle in its entirety then I don't see a fucking problem at all my last arm day was for triceps it was just eight sets of heavy pushdowns with a straight bar same set just repeat it back to back and guess what? <clears throat> My triceps were fucking destroyed. Now, I may not want to do that same movement every tricep lift, just because, you know, it is important to actually hit your shit with a variety of movements, just to make sure you really hit it in its entirety. But, look, man, if for, for one day your lift is all one movement, I don't see a fucking problem. The last chest day, people were like... All he did was chest press and pec flies? That's not enough. I mean, it was like eight sets. Eight set workout is about right, you know. So, whether or not you want to do like six different movements and only do like maybe one or two sets on each one, or you want to stick with maybe just one or two and have those be the whole thing, as long as at the end of it you went hard, you're fatigued, you're fully pumped, maybe you went a little bit heavier than you have before, progressive overload style and guess what probably a good lift you know so don't uh don't get too concerned i know there's a very large a very large pressure to train with the most optimal science studies supported efforts but whatever man come on go to the gym lift your weights eat your protein down a bunch of carbs as long as you do all those things consistently, you're going to make solid gains. There's a, I think there's, well, there's definitely a point of diminishing returns where, you know, you start doing three second eccentric, two second concentric with a pause. And uh, like, I think if you're thinking about that every set, I mean, you do you, of course, if you like that, I'm not going to say don't do it. But for me, I don't find it to be very... Maybe not, e not even enjoyable. I just don't find it to be very exciting. You know, it's way easier for me to you know, just get on a leg extension, slap on a fuck ton of weight, and just do reps until I can't move. Or same thing with leg curls. Same thing with curls today or tricep pushdowns. I like some lighter squeezing sets too. Don't get me wrong. But for the majority of my volume, I just... I kind of like being a little bit more empty-headed... Just fucking trying to exert myself as hard as possible. Which, I mean, that's up to you to figure out what you like. You know? Because I've done a couple fucking... You've seen them. I've done lifts where it was an arm day just like this. But instead of a bunch of heavy sets like I'm going to do today, I'm doing very light squeezing reps. <sighs> very methodical. You know, hitting failure, but not from, you know weight-based tensile fatigue 
Because you got to think, if I'm doing a push down with the stack and like three plates slapped on the side of it, that's much more tension on my triceps than if I do like 20 pounds single arm and I just really try to squeeze it. Now, of course, the burn is good, and I do think it's a good set, but I mean, the whole point of this sh training is to you know break your shit down so you can build it up stronger. Had a little whoopsie daisy on my bike a little bit ago, and uh, not a motorbike. No, not a fucking motorcycle. I'm talking like a well, an electric motorbike. A little uh, yeah, like an electric bike for school. I tell you something. If you have a walk to class and it's more than like 15 minutes, if you can swing it, getting an electric something is so nice. Oh my goodness. It's like, oh, five minutes to class? All right, let's go. And then I'm right there. So a little words to the wise. If you're still in college somewhere, or fuck, man, even if your job is pretty close to where you live, <coughs> At least if the weather's nice. I'm sure it'll... I'm sure eventually it'll kind of become cost-effective. Like, you won't be paying for gas going back and forth. But then you are paying for electricity, and you gotta do the math. You know, Look at that for your own situation and see if it's a good move. But, uh, yeah, so enough of that. So, hamstrings is gonna be good. I know I'm gonna be able to go hard, really load them up, pump them to shit. But quads may be a little bit more lax. Like, I'm definitely not going to do any really heavy squatting. I'm sure it'll be a bit on the lighter side. So, probably leg extensions, some sissy squat, supersets. So, you know, do a set of leg extensions. And then jump straight into sissy squats right away. With, you know, make use of the pre-exhaustion of my quads. So, even though it won't be, like, the most obliterating lift... Quads are still going to get pumped up, for sure. And then... That's pretty much it. So, I was just sort of thinking... Uh, what makes a good workout? So, what do I feel or see or do... Where, at the end of my workout, I'm checking my pump. Like, what are the criteria that let me say, Okay, this was a really good workout. I think this is an effective workout. I'm going to get gains from this. Versus, oh, that was a really shit workout. Fuck. That's not going to do anything for me. So, primary factor. Like, the main fucking difference that you're going to notice by the time you're done with a good workout is you should be fucking pumped. You know? Now, I'm not going to say that's the end-all, be-all, like, box that you have to check to say, I had a good workout or not. Because you can get a pump doing, like, scrappy sets. If I wanted to just get a chest pump, I could sit on the, um, like, two cables and just pump out, like, pretty lightweight, just flies. You know, decline, right in front of the body, maybe even kind of incline, just hit my whole chest. And after maybe 20 minutes of that, like, pretty high frequency sets, you know, like maybe 10, 20 reps, set them down for a minute. Like, not really doing any damage, but just sitting there pumping out reps, set after set after set. I can get a pretty good chest pump, so that's not really a crazy effective workout in my mind. So in that sense, getting pumped, it's not it. There's more to it. Um, I think you have to have some pretty difficult and high intensity sets to go along with adding to that, you know, pumpedness. Because if I just sit here and do lightweight to get a pump, I don't think that's it. I think I'm missing out on the stimulatory benefits of you know, a ton of tension. You know, there's a lot of different ways to build muscle, right? We've seen dudes, like uh, if you're a Phil Heath fan, he loves lightweight, controlled reps, very methodical, really focusing on the squeeze, you know, perfect technique, maximum mind-muscle connection, that sort of stuff. And look at him, he's fucking huge. Now, of course, that's kind of, that's not really the best example for the general population. There's some other shit going on, which we all know about. But that's sort of style, right? And then we've got a... Uh, oh, this guy was freaking crazy to see. Hollingstead. Um, Hollings... I may be saying that wrong. Look it up. should be James Hollingstead. Holy shit. <laughs> Not only is he w fucking way bigger than me, too, but in terms of weight... Oh, my God. You just have to check out his Instagram and his training videos. 
And I got to see him today at a, or not today, but this weekend at the expo too. Insane. But seriously heavyweight, low ish rep sets, you know, closer to 8 to 12, but really maximizing mechanical tension. And of course, fucking freak too. And I think, you know, in terms of what you should kind of aim for in your workouts, progressive overload, mechanical tension, that's definitely fucking up there. You're not going to get massive arms just sitting around curling the 20s for, you know, a really controlled set of 15, like really holding it slow. Like you're going to get way more out of curling as much as you can. It's reasonable form for 10 to 12, even with a little bit of swinging, because you're going to put way more tension on your biceps. That's half the reason why I like doing dumbbell curls in the beginning of my arm days, is because it's the lifts for biceps which I can load the most weight with and do it the safest, at least based on kind of how it feels. Like if my first set for biceps was like preacher curls, I would not want to try to do as much weight as I can and like do like a set of eight because that's just not a movement which is really meant for that kind of insane loading. So I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent here, but it's almost like doing a dumbbell curl it's almost like the compound lift in my mind for biceps where I can really load up a lot of weight and then once I do a few good sets there I can move on to more you know isolation squeezing movements like single arm preacher curls easy bar preachers cable curls uh, concentration machine curls you know all sorts of other stuff where nothing else is really kind of coming to play right I'm not using my body to swing anything it's pretty much all biceps but if I had to sort of you know, make a pitch on my basic style of training, which I, I do stand behind, would be heavier sets towards the beginning of the workout, followed by maybe lighter squeezing burning sets toward the end. You know, like if I were totally fresh, knee, limb-wise, everything for quads today, then quads would look way different. I'm still going to start on leg extensions, because that's what I like to you know, get my knees, all sorts of my tendon area warmed up. And also I feel better pressing with a little bit of a quad pump, which two or three sets of leg extensions will give me. But quads would start off with really heavy leg extensions, heavy squats. This gym has a really good um, leg press that I like, like single leg loaded. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to really load up my knees today. But I do like it. You know, Usually I'd want to start with some heavy pressing. And then come back to leg extensions for light squeezing sets. And maybe not even squeezing, but just lighter, you know, kind of, I really kind of want to say pump work. Because after you finish some hard sets and you really, I mean, I don't want to say you've done like muscular damage. Because it's not like just tearing down your muscle tissue is, I mean, when we talk about the real fine details of how a set is going to make you grow. This is not an exact fucking science. Not yet, at least. You know, give it a few more years of um, Jeff Nippard, Mike Isertal, Renaissance periodiz periodization. And if they can give me a real perfect ass, you know, summarized detail of the exact whatever, and that's like the certified most effective sets, guess what, man? I'm going to do it. Because I'm like, I want to I grow as much as possible, obviously. Uh, but, you know, to an extent, it's, we're not baking here. It's not an exact science. This is more like cooking. It's very emotional and passionate. You know, if you can really put your heart into what you're doing, do a hard-ass set of leg extension and curls or whatever, it's going to end up working. Uh, oh, so, but heavy sets with some squeezing sets, too. And you can go back and forth, you know. Sometimes I do all squeezing sets if, um, Maybe if I'm feeling a little tender in my joints or something, I might do a lighter day. Still do hard sets, but just with less weight. And if I'm feeling strong, I'm going to make use of that and really load up whatever I'm hitting. Uh, but as long as you do some hard-ass sets, and you know it, I don't mean like you put on a, a, you know, a, a really grungy face and you like pretend that you did a hard set to failure just so that you, know, you fit in with the dudes around you. I mean, you seriously pushed yourself to the point where you can rack the weight and say, oh, shit, 
That was a good one. I was getting real fired up for that. If you can do your sets like that for your workout, and then finish with a pump, that's it. You know, when people ask me, like, uh, or not even me, but just anybody, when the discussion arises, like, oh, what's the best chest workout? What's the best chest exercise? It's like, there's no answer. That's not a question that has an answer. You know, it's almost flawed in a sense. Like, what's the best chest, chest exercise for what? You know, for, for heavy pressing, for flies? Uh, even then, that's going to depend on your own build. Like, if you've got a certain, like, wide clavicles or shorter uh, fucking humerus or something, your forearms are extra long, and it's, it's going to be different for you. So, with a lot of this shit, and I know this is a stupid question, or a stupid answer, because you're like, oh, what's the best way to go about it? Uh, I mean, really, I kind of, I want to say, like, fuck, man, you got to figure it out for yourself. Now, a lot of the basic building blocks and you know, fundamental work has already been done. There's some pretty solid rules that you can follow, which will point you in the right direction. Right? Hit every body part twice a week. Take rest days when necessary. Right? Protein intake, calories, whatever. Cardio on a consistent basis. That one's still a little tricky for folks. Oh, that's about a sneeze. But the basic gist is it's tried and true. You, know? you lift heavy weights, you're going to grow. So, really what you should be focusing on is just your own fucking intensity. Which I know is, it's like a silly answer. You know, it's like, what's, um, oh, how do I, how am I going to have a good workout? It's like, <laughs> it's almost like I'm saying, well, you just have to have a good workout. But, you know, I'm not you. You know, you're your own, you're your own dude. You're the hero of your story. You got to figure this shit out, man. Uh, if you love easy bar curls... Fucking spam them. Go hard. Play some, you know, some uh, some DMX. Get hyped off your ass and fucking throw that shit around and start screaming. You know, whatever you've got to do. Working out, it's, um, I like the simplicity. Because a lot of different things or, like, endeavors or whatever, it's very, like, skill-based, very methodical. Like, you have to constantly be learning and adapting. Uh, like, if you're trying to become like a high level athlete, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of different. So I like the simplicity of lifting weights because once you get the gist of your training style and like, you know, you have pretty solid form, then all you have to do is go in and fucking just push yourself. You know, you don't necessarily have to get too mental with it. You just pick up some dumbbells, curl them as hard as you fucking can with reasonable form, and you're just going to fucking grow. As long as you couple that hard-ass workout with a substantial amount of calories so you've got the energy to, you know, funnel some contractile tissue onto your biceps. I don't know if um, this is, you know, I, uh, I feel like I've heard Dorian Yates say this specific sort of speech uh, pretty often. But there's three phases um, of movement. You're concentric, where you're actually lifting the weight. You're going to pull it down, and you're pulling it down. And then there's that little holding force. And then there's the eccentric. You know? So, I do like the idea. Or not the idea, I literally just do like assisted reps. Because your first sort of uh, sequence of muscular failure is going to be that concentric. I'll still be able to slowly return the weight upwards but need assistance actually pulling it back down. So having somebody else help you actually bring it down chin level, and then you have to deal with the fucking, you know, burn of letting it up in a relatively controlled manner, uh, it just totally changes it. So I'm sure we'll pick some of that. But part of me also wants to do whatever, I mean, whatever kind of back day he does. You know? it's, if you train solo, you got to remember, I mean, nearly... I don't even know how many, 99%, 90% of all my back days have just sort of fucking popped out of my own brain. Not that I haven't used like other people's workouts as um, like inspiration in a way, but even though I feel like I am pretty varied with my training, maybe I could be doing it in a sort of a subconscious pattern where every back day is kind of the same thing. 
I try to mix it up. I try to do different rows and pull downs and rep schemes and orders of movements. But lifting with somebody else, I'll kind of show you a little bit of a different way to go about it. If you can you know, back off and sort of let them take control of what sets or, uh, or what movements that they want to do. Like if, if, uh, if we move on to like a row and he's like, oh, I really like doing drop sets here. I'll say, fuck yeah, man, let's hit it. Even though maybe I would prefer just like off the top of my head to do like a straight set. Worth changing it up. And then another thing about training with other people, especially full-fledged lifters, other people, is fucking get you going. You know, it's not like I, I'm walking in here like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to lift more weight than them, or I'm gonna. Uh, it's not like that. But if you see somebody do a solid ass set, and you're up next in the queue, you don't want to disappoint. So if you're training on your own for most of the time. You can kind of lose track of just how hard your sets are. What happens if every set you do, you go to like what you think is failure, like what you think is a good set, but then you watch somebody next to you reach the same level you did, but then take it two steps higher. So a lot of the times, you can take your sets further, either with assistance or with just pure willpower. Like when it comes to something like a bench or something like a squat or let me think what else or like uh like a pull down stuff like that muscular failure isn't too hard you know i can reach a point on barbell bench on my own where i can literally hit failure and i cannot do another complete rep and i need to you know put the weight onto the safeties or else i'm going to get smushed but if i've got somebody training with me or Maybe not even training with him, just being uh, me next to me to spot me. If you go up to fucking anybody in the gym, maybe don't ask like a hundred pound kid to spot you on three fifteen. But most people are going to be pretty accommodating; they'll help you out. I would recommend safeties even with the spotter, though. But you can have somebody give you some assisted reps. You get to a point where you know you're a failure, and then instead of just re racking it, try to get three more outs. Tell the guy like, all right, really pull on these. Sometimes I get a little bit too, I think sometimes I've overestimated the, either the strength of my spotter or my own strength to the point where I, I think I probably make them do a little bit too much work. And with something like an inclined barbell spot, you're kind of like hovering over nothing. That's probably a little freaky. But, you know, that's what I'm talking about, so. Oh, yeah, and then with sets which are a little bit more tame in terms of, like, the actual weight that you're lifting, but it's more so of like burning out. Like if you're doing lateral raises with the 30s or something, or dumbbell curls, you know, relatively light, or I mean, whatever. Movements where you can do a considerable amount of partials. I've definitely done sets where, and I'm not saying like a few times, I've definitely done this on a consistent basis. It's something I want to work on. Where I end the set just because I you know, I feel like, okay, that's enough. But in reality, how many more reps could I have gotten out? Just because my triceps are on fire at rep 15, if I can get five more complete reps out, even though they're really hard and uncomfortable, like I'm really fucking exerting myself to get them, that's what I should be doing. I'm not saying I do that every set, but that is the bar that I want to you know, approach with my training. I think... Every so often, and this doesn't even have to do with training with other people, but sometimes it can sort of be a catalyst for this kind of like self-realization. But I can remember pretty fucking distinctly every few... It hasn't really happened as of late. I've kind of been... I feel like I've been pushing myself pretty well. But hey, maybe that's just me being complacent. I'm being a fucking chump and I should take it to the next level. But I can remember throughout my transition from like year one lifter to year two to year three um, every so often I mean maybe six months or so um, sometimes it's because like I had a, a lift where I could tell I didn't really push myself or maybe I, don't know. I remember one time uh, I've only ever been to one bodybuilding show and I thought it was kind of big this was 
I was in the low 200s. I felt pretty big at the time. Uh, and the classic guys come out, who I'm like trying to compare myself with. And the person next to me, I was like talking smack on the amateurs. And the person next to me is like, oh, could you beat them? Because these guys were like more full-fledged classic dudes. And uh, I drove home. I was like, fuck, man, I got I to gotta take it up a notch. I got to really start going hard. I think over time, your lifts, and this could also just sort of be your overall dedication to pushing yourself towards progress, but it should kind of, I don't want to say it steadily increases, because that's not really my experience. In the beginning as a lifter, I'm like just eating some protein, I'm like, honestly all I would do is I'd go down to the basement and I'd bench probably just pretty much every day. Not even doing working sets, but I would just bench like 135 for a few every, for a couple sets. Like that's the kind of you know goofiness I was just starting off with. Which, no problem with it, but that's just kind of what was going on. So, there was like an initial investment that was like here for, I don't know, maybe a month or so. And then I'm like, okay, I should really, you know, I look up like how to do an actual workout split or an actual routine. Well, the bar has now spiked, you know, now I'm doing more, I'm putting more effort in it. Oh, all right, now I should, I should really look into macros, start tracking my macros, that's another spike. And then once you get all these little like level ups of getting the gist of your diet, a basic training approach, you know, pushing yourself pretty hard. If you've got most of that under control, then the only vector that's really going to change over time, I feel like, is your sort of training intensity. And honestly, just the amount of drive you can bring to your lifts. So every few months, I'd either have a shit lift or I'd see somebody in my gym actually pushing themselves. At the gym I was just at in yesterday's video, yeah, yeah, in yesterday's video, there used to be a guy there, fucking 30 pounds of beef, of beef, I combined muscle and beef, 30 pounds of muscle, at least, bigger than I am now. Like, dude was repping at 405 like nothing. Like, I've messed with 405 at Incline, but this guy was, this was his real working set. For this guy, 405 was my 315. Like, he has zero problem doing it, working sets back to back to back. I wouldn't see him all the time. Maybe he trained in the morning or something. I don't know. But when I would see him, he was just fucking serious. Honestly, it might have just been like a... Yeah, what's the word? Like an intimidation vibe that I picked up on him. Or that I picked up from him. Because you gotta remember, at the time, he was fucking... I don't know, like... Upper mid-twenties. And I'm like 17. And the dude is fucking nuts. But like, that sort of thing... It should kind of fire you up, and you should sort of realize, like, fuck, I could be training harder. And then sort of step it up in terms of your intensity. That's your new bar. Now, with all my lifts, if I did, if every set that I, I mean, not even every, if I had, like, one, even one set where I didn't push myself, and, like, you know, I was at, like, I had, like, if I had a set where I had, like, ten reps in the tank or something, and I just re-racked it. Actually, I, <laughs> that never even happens. I'm never even close to that point. If I even have a shitty set now, which usually only happens on my on my first set, like sometimes with leg extensions, I start a little bit too light, and I could tell I called the set early. I won't even count it. So I think I'm kind of beyond that now. But if I knew that I had some shitty sets, or I wasn't really in the zone, or just for whatever reason the, the lift was like shitty compared to my normal. And that's sort of like a wake-up call. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? And take it up a notch. So your new normal of intensity, on a normal period of time, it, it should be pretty consistent. And then every so often, you should have a moment of either just like pride, ego, whatever, where you're like, okay, I could be going way harder than I am now. And I'm not sure exactly what sort of spiked those moments, but I definitely benefited from it. Because every time that would happen, this is my baseline of intensity for my lifts, and then it would spike. This is my new normal. That's what I'm used to. So now I'm at a, like, back when I was a starter lifter, um, I was doing a lot more volume. So my workouts would be like 25 sets per body part. So I would do like five sets of straight bar pushdowns and then five sets of rope or whatever. And with that much volume, all my sets were just pretty fluffy. Like, I'd have sets to failure of, like, bench, 
or like some dumbbell curls I think I probably took to failure but a lot of my sets were really just like you know, feel a burn and then rack and I'm done and oh my god let's just say this yuck Ugh. so I think what I'm really trying to say is there's always an extra bar you can go you know, nobody's really pushing every set as hard as they possibly can you know if you were able to somehow hook up electrodes to my quads and smack me down on a leg extension and turned on a program which said okay fire at maximum capacity for maximum reps I don't think I could ever get that set just you know, on my own using my own fucking brain to you know flex my quads but I want to get as close to that as I can 